letter in the Gentiles in the Bible here. And so one thing I want for y'all to know, especially for some of y'all a little bit new, newer, um, we're the Gentiles. And, and the Romans through Philemon are written to the Gentiles. Not to say the rest of the Bible we don't read, you do. But in the book of Acts, whenever the apostles all preached the gospel and people were saved and set free and everything, um, after that, then Romans through Philemon was they were Paul wrote all those letters to the Gentiles, and they were all letters to believers, to believers in the churches. And and of course, I mean it's just like nowadays though you have churches and some people are actually unbelievers. Um, sadly enough, they're deceived. But um, this is written to believers. Okay. So first thing we're going to do, guys, before we pray, is I like for y'all to stand, and we're going to read. In the book of Romans, chapter 1, uh, starting in verse 1 to 17. Right, I'm reading out of the New King James. Um, you might have it for <coughs> questions. Okay. But I did not want to read out of the Passion here. So starting in verse 1. Paul the Apostle. Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God which He promised before through His prophets and the Holy Scriptures, concerning His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Through Him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for His name among whom you also are the called of Jesus Christ. To all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of His Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request if by some means now at last I may find a way in the will of God to come to you. For I long to see you, but I may that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established. That is, that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. Now I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often planned to come to you, but was hindered until now, that I might have some fruit among you also, just as among the other Gentiles. I am a debtor both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to wise and to unwise. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it is the righteousness of God, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Y'all may be seated. Let's go ahead and pray. Have you started yet? Yes. Okay. Father, we... We come to you, Lord, and, and, and we lift up your holy word tonight, Father. I pray for, for a teaching ability tonight, Lord, to show us exactly what you want us to hear, Holy Spirit. To show us exactly where you want us to be, and to know that the just live by faith. We thank you. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor tonight. I say this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Alright, so... The title of this is The Just Live by Faith. Whenever we were uh, worshiping, one thing I was talking about, or I was thinking about, is how if the world only knew how holy God was, if they knew how only holy, righteous, and just He really is, but also how He's so loving and He sent His only begotten Son so that we could accept Him and live new in Him, but I say that because like we were talking about with Christianity in general in this world, in this culture, is that people take Christianity for granted because the devil has completely destroyed that name. Mm -hmm. But we know in this church house right now, 
that Christianity is all about Christ and Christ crucified and exactly what he did for us. And so, you know, the one thing I love about Paul is, I forget exactly where it is in here, I think it's actually in Romans somewhere, he talks about, he, he doesn't come with, with these big words or these big, you know, he doesn't have this elegant, eloquent speech. It's simply about Jesus Christ and Christ alone. And that's what God has given me in, in my walk with Him. It is, that's what it's all about. And it's all about living in that. And I'm not going to get into that until later, but at the very end, I want to encourage us all in our walk with Christ. And I want to encourage us all to know that with Jesus, we have victory. And I say that because there are a lot of people walking around and you might be in here right now, you might be listening, that you're listening to the lies. You're listening to the fear and, the, and the, the tormenting spirits and these things that are just completely lies. We are to walk in our identity every single day. If it's anything that's coming at you that's condemning, that's a lie from the devil, okay? God will convict you. If you're doing something wrong, but if you're striving to live a holy, obedient, and surrendered life, God will comfort you. Our Holy Spirit is our comforter. Okay, so the, the main scripture, the, the focus here is in verse 17. It says, For in it is the righteousness of God, which is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. So I want a little bit of interaction on this one. What does that mean to y'all? The just shall live by faith. Yes? My translation says the righteous person lives by faith. Okay. Like that, you know, there's a little difference. Uh -huh. Well, you know, those are characteristics of God, how He's holy, righteous, and just. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, with our walk, whenever, whenever we are saved, Okay, whenever we are born again, we now are being controlled by the Holy Spirit. And see, Kelly and I have been going back and forth on this because, you know, th there's a mystery in salvation, right? We know that because we don't know everyone's heart. I don't know your heart in here right now. I don't know people's hearts, but we know people by their fruits. We know them by their lives that they live. You know, I heard a man say one time, uh, actually a, a man named Paul Washer, and he said, you know, you can come into a church house, you can look nice, you can have a smile on your face, you can have it all going on. But what happens if you bring a video recorder to your house and they catch you on film being a monster in the closet, literally? Because anyone can be a hypocrite. And I don't know about you, but as much as you've read about Jesus and His walk and His ministries, He called those hypocrites out. And He did not tolerate those hypocrites. And we are to live a godly example, a, a godly life. You know, it's like, you know, we hear, well, someone, you know, they were saved back then, and, and they fell way back, and, and then, you know, now they're, they're coming back to Him. And I'm not going to get into an argument, but I know that theologically speaking is that whenever one is saved, converted, born again, regenerated, they are completely changed from the inside out. They are going to live a holy life because the Holy Spirit is now inside of them. The Holy Spirit doesn't... People say, once saved, always saved. If, if someone argues with someone's eternal security whenever they receive the Holy Spirit, they're basically saying that God is going to take away the Holy Spirit from inside of someone, and that is a lie. Okay? Um, literally, it, and, and, but my point is, is that there are a lot of false conversions there are a lot of false conversions. And that's why repentance, the gospel, unashamed gospel of Jesus Christ, are being taught. And there's this thing whenever we say, uh, I could come up to you and say, without even saying anything, say, do you want to receive Jesus? Do you want to have Jesus in your heart? Instead of actually explaining the power of the Holy Spirit to come in and dwell you. Okay? I think sometimes we might leave that out. And I feel that there is a divine difference in that because I've seen it with my own eyes. I've been to the jail ministry and I've talked to men. I came in there pretty much on fire saying, if you die today, are you going to heaven or hell? That day, this man said, I'm going to hell. I know I am. And I explained the gospel. We talked about repentance. There were things that he was guilty of and he confessed of them out loud. 
laid hands, received the Holy Spirit. Next day came in. He said, man, I'm not worried anymore. That's conversion. Mm -hmm. But I, we just, you know, there, there's the devil's in, in he, he works in the, the not checking off things gospel, I guess you'd say. <clears throat> but we are to live by faith, okay? And so I want to focus on this for a second. Book of Hebrews, and actually Jesus says it to His disciples, He, he basically says, you know, it's impossible. It's impossible for man to do this, right? But that's why we have God. And so whenever we have Him in our lives, and I want to encourage you to not, not, not just focusing on saving faith, but actually focusing on your faith and your daily walk. Okay, so we all have these different things that we do every day. We have workplaces, we have families, we have people that we are around. And so how would we display our faith to our family members? So I want to give you an example. How would you display your faith to a family member? Just the words you use when you're talking to them. Right. Yeah. I heard a very wise woman once say that you cannot ride the faith horse and the fear horse at the same time. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we are to walk in that holiness, in that straight up identity in Christ Jesus, knowing the one that saved us, right? We get saved and then and then we, we, we forget of the one that has completely won the battle. He has destroyed the evil forces. He has full authority. And we have the ability to walk in that authority. We have the ability to walk in that authority every single day. And I love to say this and twice on Sunday. We have that ability. But are we doing it? You know, that's the thing because... I think we get so caught up in things. And, and it's hard, right? Because we have children and we have wives who are so amazing. <laughs> and we, we have these, these struggles, right? We, we have these things. But that's why like, I want to tell you guys right now, and we're here right now, we got to live in this book. we got to live in it. we got to live in it because I don't know about you, but whenever I read it in the morning, I just get a peace, a peace inside of me. It's like when I, when I got... Uh, out of my walk and I went to the school and I, I ended up talking to the principal his name is Principal Valeriano he was only at the school for about a year and we were talking and, and, and it was so amazing and I never really told anyone this and this is talking about his faith it was so amazing because I was just on fire for the Lord and I was telling him all about it at a school and, and this man he felt so comfortable with me that he didn't feel comfortable with anyone else. And he told me, he said, Jake, he said, when I get up every morning, he said, I read the Bible and God gives me peace. And this was a man who, who was in administration and so he kind of had to kind of hide it a little bit. But I could tell the genuineness with his walk. And it was so beautiful. And so the more that we share with others, just like Kelly and I, we just went to, uh, and I want to shout out to her if she watches this later because her name is Beck is what they call her. Becky, Randy's girlfriend. Um, her uncle Randy's wow. girlfriend. Uh, we were with family and everything, and and I kind of mentioned how I love Kelly's mom. Sometimes we butt heads, and we love each other. But how I was just hanging out, and all of a sudden, me and Beck, we just started talking about Jesus, and it was amazing. So you would be surprised at those that might actually have a relationship, or might actually. Um, want to talk about it if we step out in faith and talk to them because we're to live by faith we're to live by that faith to where yeah we're going to have friends right Michael we're going to have friends that don't really understand mm -hmm. but we're still to be and, and in that example we're to be a good example and to pray for them our biggest strategy is praying it's not a strategy but our biggest you know tool is, is to pray for them yep. and I know you guys have seen it. Whenever you pray and those prayers get answered, we're amazed, huh? Mm, yes. It, it yes. is unbelievable. It really is. If y'all will turn into John chapter 3, John three thirty six. John three thirty six says, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. You know, again, the, and I'm going to try to keep this parallel, but there's always different things to talk about. Um, if only people understood how holy God is. Because 
God's wrath is going to be on those that don't believe on the Son. Mm -hmm. And and that's why we're to step out in faith. At, yes, ma'am. Sorry. Fun fact again. Um, different verb again. Obey the Son. Okay. Just saying. <laughs> Yeah, anyone who doesn't obey the Son will never experience eternal life, but remains under God's angry judgment. Man, you must have the... I was checking, I'm like, what is this? Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is the New King James. This is actually closer to the closer translation. But um, anyways, um, so for those that don't abide in Him, and I love the word abide too, and it goes back to John 15, and, and Jesus talks about how His disciples abide in Him. So, I would ask you right now, are we abiding in Him every day? You know, abiding in Him and staying close to Him. Because uh, it, it brings such a, even a more uplifting peace inside of us whenever we do abide in Him. Because now we understand that um, it's about living by faith. Okay, and so we live in a world, and we were talking about it during the announcements, a world that they just live by sight. They just live by the things that they see, just by the things that they do, just by the things that this world has going on. But that's why we come into a place to where we can gather, to where we can fellowship as the body of Christ, and we can get into the Word, and we can pray to the Lord, and we can seek His wisdom. Because we're not called to be like the world. At all. And, and it seems like I say that a lot, but I can't emphasize that enough because we are here to be ambassadors for Christ, but we are to set our sights on the heavenlies. You know, Kelly and I talk like, I mean, I'll tell you right now, for me, Jesus can come back any day. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. You know, I'm ready. And, and we don't know when, and we're not supposed to know when. It doesn't really matter. I'm happy and content with with my everyday walk, with whatever I do, mm -hmm. and knowing that it's all going to be okay. That's right. That's right. Um, Amen. But Amen. we live in a world that literally mocks and ridicules people that yep. are actually saying, like, he's coming back soon. He's coming back, guys. Yeah. Look at the things in the world right now. He's coming back. He's coming back. And, and, again, we don't know when, but we know what the Bible says. And... Uh, we're, just, we're to focus on that. Acts 3.26. You turn over to the, the right. 3.26 here. Acts 3.26. To you first God, having raised up His servant Jesus, sent Him to bless you and turning away, turning away every one of you from your iniquities. And so we know that living by faith, then God turns us away from those iniquities. Have you guys realized that in your walk, the sins that you have committed in the past are just completely like, you don't even want them anymore. They're, they're, it's they're repentance gone, yeah. because like those things are just, it, it's, I, almost, I almost picture it like, like I can't even turn around to them. Uh -huh. And I don't want to, but it's like I can't even turn around to them. And so those iniquities have all been washed away. And I just want to tell everyone online, like people that are on there, about repentance. Repentance isn't just doing something and then the next day asking for forgiveness and then doing it again and asking for forgiveness. It's a literal change. A change of heart, a change of mind, a change of thinking and everything. It is completely different. And now we love the things of God. We love the things of God in everything. Romans 3.21. I've got a lot of scriptures here. Romans 3.21. And so, one thing that I've touched on for a minute, and I'm going to talk about at the end, is the wrath. And do you guys, here's a question for y'all. Because I kind of want to make the, make the Wednesdays a little bit of a, a discussion. Do y'all know the word that is on the opposite side of wrath? What's the other word that's on the opposite spectrum that we have? Grace. It's actually mercy, I believe. Mercy, see we were given the mercy of God instead of the wrath, because we deserve the cross, like, and I want for y'all to know this, like, literally, the Father made sure that the Son was on the cross, and He, he literally, you know, there's many, many church houses, the, the Romans, the, the people, they, they put Him on the cross physically, right, but Father God 
punished his son and killed his son, okay, for us, because we deserve that. We deserve to be killed on that cross. We did. Because that was God's wrath. Because God is holy. And see, if people don't understand the holiness of Him and how literally He had to pour His wrath upon His Son. And, and to know this too, and I was actually telling Alex and Nicole this last night, and they were probably freaked out. <laughs> but about how from the beginning, Jesus, the Father and the Holy Spirit, had perfect fellowship. And then sin came in, the plan of redemption and everything. Jesus was born. And realizing that whenever all the sins, all the sins that we have ever committed, past, present, and future, were poured upon Him, in the book of Psalms, it talks about how Father God couldn't even look at His Son because His holiness. And, and Jesus was crying out, Father. He was just crying to Him like, Daddy, can you imagine a son crying out to Him? And, and he can't even look at it. And he did that for us. The depths of the fact that he died in the flesh. We get a little paper cut, right? A little paper cut? Mm -hmm. okay. and, and we talk about the things that Jesus had inside of his hands and his feet and his side on his head. The lashes on his back. Every single thing that, that we can even imagine. I don't know about y'all. I can't even get through the passion of the Christ. It's hard. Uh, but my point is is that we deserve that, but and but see, this is what happens, though, is that whenever whenever someone like me gets up here and I say we deserve that, people start thinking that I'm being mean. And I'm literally saying that we are so, so blessed. That. That's such grace. That is such grace and mercy that we are literally, we, we are knuckleheads, right? I don't want to say wicked. I'll say knuckleheads. We are knuckleheads to a point to where... We were separated, and all the think about the worst thing you've ever done in your life. He's forgiven all that because of Jesus and the cross, and what the Father did to the Son, and how the Son rose from the dead, and how the Holy Spirit is now with us, and how now we can live by faith, by living a, a holy, righteous, and just life. You know, we, we hear about being a holy, righteous, and just God. We have the ability, if we abide in Christ and we live by the power of the Holy Spirit every single day, to be such representatives of Him that we can show others around us that it's about living by faith. It's not about living by fear. And I literally, I want to speak out against the spirit of fear right now because the spirit of fear is not welcome here. And, and the spirit of fear, I'm going to tell you right now, you rebuke that son of a gun. You don't tolerate that stuff. And I've, I've been attacked lately, the last week or so, and uh, the spirit of fear has really been trying to mess with me. But he knows who I belong to. And he knows that whenever I speak the name of Jesus, when I plead the blood, when I say that I have authority in the name of Jesus, he knows where he has to go. And we need to do that too. I would encourage you in your walk for us to, uh, to speak against those things. And there's one thing I want to throw in here for a second. A while back I put out a message. I put out devotionals and stuff. And, uh, and I put out a message called Godly Confidence. There, there's such a form that is a false humility. Have you ever heard of false humility? To where it's like we, we can't even accept a compliment because we think we're being, uh, I don't know. It's all glory to God. It's all glory to God. But sometimes it's almost like we, we put on a, a face to where we're trying to be so good and it's like, dude, just accept a compliment and know that the glory is to Him, Right? But there's a confidence that we can walk in. You know, and I want for us all to walk in that confidence every single time. Wherever you go, walk in the confidence to know that we represent the King of glory every day that we walk. Every day we represent Him and His kingdom. And, and on Sunday, we're going to start getting into the kingdom of God because that is what we need to focus on. And we're going to start with Max, Matthew 6.33. And I'm not going to get into that yet. But what I'm going to say is, is that we are to represent the kingdom. The kingdom, when you're born again, where is the kingdom? But literally the kingdom is inside of us though. Whenever Jesus comes, we'll have the kingdom here. But we, the kingdom is inside of us and we're to represent the kingdom. We're to represent the kingdom of God wherever we go. By living by faith. And living a holy life. You know, and, and what is it, so I want to ask you all, what does it mean to live a holy life? To live holy. Without sin. Huh? Holiness without sin. 
Yeah, striving, <laughs> striving to to put aside all the things that you know are wrong, even to take our thoughts captive, even even to to just like Romans twelve two uh, that that scripture is so amazing how you know uh, we are to have a transformed mind by the renewing of the word, but the only way we're going to get a transformed mind is by renewing in the word, right? Just like to dwell in the secret place. Are we going to be protected from a disease, but we're not even dwelling in the secret place, right? I mean, thinking about those things are really, really eye-opening. Um, but I would just encourage us, man, just to walk in that, walk in that confidence that God gives us. We're all different. Some of us are more, more outgoing. Some of us are more meek or whatever. But to, to have the ability to walk in that confidence every day that we go, wherever we are. If you're at school, babe, walk in that confidence, all right? Just to walk in that because, but again, I just want to say like, the, sometimes the world wants to say, well, that's pride or whatever. But if, if you're doing it in a manner to where you're serving the Lord and you are just being yourself, there's nothing wrong with just being yourself at all. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. There's nothing wrong amen. with just... With just being outgoing and loving others and having a, a good, positive spirit, there's nothing wrong with that. If y'all want to turn to Galatians 3.11, Galatians 3.11 says, But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God in, ev in, uh, in evident, for the just shall live by faith. And so that just reiterates it again, the just shall live by faith. And so again, faith are things that we can't see. So, so we pray, and what do you do whenever you pray? Do we expect that prayer to get to get answered? Do, do we live by faith in knowing that we're praying to the Lord? We're praying to our Heavenly Father who, who hears every prayer and, and who, who is listening to every single thing that we have to, to pray in that. And whenever we read the Word, are we, are we just opening the Bible up like to Leviticus and, and getting stuck there? Or are we literally like praying for the Holy Spirit to show us where to read? And I would encourage us all right now as well, as far as living by faith, is every morning you get up, and I've been doing this myself, every morning you get up, pray that the Holy Spirit will lead, guide, and direct you for the spirit of counsel to where He counsels you, to where we surrender our lives to Him. Surrender our lives to Him. And I'm going to tell you right now that there is true, like, I don't know, it's, it's multiplying peace and comfort whenever you surrender your life to Him. Whenever you just say, Lord, use me and I will go. Send me and I will go. And I want to encourage us in this room to do that. And for those online. Because just because I'm up here, I'm not anything. Like, we're all equal. We're all the body of Christ. And you guys can reach a lot more people than I can. I promise. Because people here, pastor, they run. They're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, but I just, I want to encourage us all to, to step out. And like, I want for you all to think about this. And Kelly and I have talked about this. Um. Whenever you are around someone and you see someone and you just kind of get a feeling. We get feelings, right? It's the Holy Spirit a lot of times. That someone might need a prayer or something. Pray for them right there, you know. Um, and Because you never know how much that will impact them. You never know how much that will impact them. It is amazing. We go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Oh dear. Okay, let's look at the context on that. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. And the one after that. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe in the, in the saving of the soul. Okay. So basically, the, the one that does draw back is actually someone that rejects the Son. Because, you know, the, the literal gospel, I mean, you, you guys ever hear, you don't, probably don't hear a whole lot on what God said about Jacob and Esau. I mean, what does he say about Jacob? He says, Esau, I hate it. God hated it? He knew. He knows the beginning from the end, and that's his holiness, and that is the reality of a place called hell too, and it's horrible. But we know we don't have to suffer. We get man. I don't know about y'all, but I'm about. I, I'm getting pretty much tired of this world, and you know, um, 
just things that go on in the world in general, things that we have to deal with every day. And and I just want to encourage y'all to know that we have a better place that we're going to, you know. And we don't know how long, but we know that uh, that there's glory to look forward to, you know. And and there's there's no worries in that. That there's pure glory in that. Um, but also we know that that we have a a mission, you know. And and I talked about it on Sunday. But my my big time job is to equip y'all and to edify you. And and I want to literally just encourage y'all, like in everything that you do. You know, um, I don't know how many uh, how many uh, places in the Bible that, that people were encouraging others. Just every single letter that Paul wrote, he was always encouraging. He was always lifting people up. He was always doing that. And, and, and I love to encourage. Like, it goes back to my coaching days. I coached high school football, and uh, it was my dream before I got saved and realized that Jesus was my dream. Um, but there was one time, uh, it was before we played Ballinger, and uh, I gave a speech before the game. We lost, like, big time. <laughs> but I gave a speech, and uh, you're supposed to laugh on that one. <laughs> we, we lost, like, big time. But um, I gave a speech, and, man, I was fired up. Actually, another coach recorded it. I don't have it anymore. <laughs> I, I knew they were a lot better, but I was trying to get our guys fired up. But but I say that because guys, um, I, I, sometimes it's hard to know what to say to people. Like and and right now, this is just literal motivation and encouragement in our walks. Because we've all dealt with things, you know. Um, like I know some of you all in this room, you know, you've dealt with with loss and and grieving and. Uh, you know, those things are hard. They really are. But the Lord knows every single ounce of pain that you've ever had inside of your heart, and He's been there the entire time. Okay. And, uh, and He understands mm -hmm. the depths of pain and sorrow and agony and the difficult things that we have done or that we have been through. But that's what Jesus took. He took it all. He took it all. And so in every single message, as y'all know, that, that, I've, that I ever preach, it's all about Jesus. And, and it's also all about our Heavenly Father who chose us before the foundation of the world. You know, I shared something earlier that I saw that really just caught me. He died for me knowing I might not ever want Him. What a love. I'll live for that. I'll read that again. He died for me, knowing I might not ever want him. What a love. I'll live for that. Do y'all realize that Jesus died even for the unbelievers? E even for those that never accepted him. Even for those that will never accept him. But realizing that our Father God, I was talking to a good friend of mine a while back, and he talked about how he can't imagine the Father's heart, knowing that even though... He knows that someday everyone is going to have to go where they go, where they're sentenced forever. But He still allows us to live this life, to have friendships, to have relationships, to, to enjoy marriage, to, to enjoy seeing our, our son make the football team or having a baby born or whatever. He lets us enjoy these things in this little bitty life that we live. But we have a Heavenly Father that is, I mean, y'all realize how good He takes care of us every day? The food that we get, the the all the ends always meet. We we're talking about that coming up here with the Gaffneys. How ends always meet. They always meet. You know, because mm -hmm. what does Jesus say? The birds in the air, I mean they they're supplied with, right? The, the, the things that, that we don't and don't worry about stuff too. Stop worrying. Stop worrying. Stop worrying. Um and also to end and talking about faith and wrapping this up. The only way that we can live by faith is the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. I encourage you to have a deep, intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. To know that He's the comforter and the teacher. He's always here with you. He's here with you. Like, he's inside of you. And He dwells in here. And, and He is everywhere. He's God Almighty. And to know that, that He will bring us that perfect peace, that perfect comfort and joy. And to know that 
that uh, the one that lives inside of you is greater than the one that's in this world. And you all hear that a lot, but really, really believing that. Um, because no matter the trial that we're going to go through, having the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us, and knowing that with Him living inside of us, we can live by faith. So I encourage us to live. And, and I, like, we talk about faith, and it's just like a lot of other words in the words in the world. They're overused, right? The word love is overused. But I want for us to really live by faith. Trust. Right? Trust. Because it's like jumping in the water for Jesus and knowing that if we choose a decision that's based upon obedience, we know that He's going to honor it. We know that He is. Trust. Just trust in the One who created us. But we can't expect Him to honor a decision that we make if we're not actually having a relationship with Him. Though. I mean, that should be common sense. But, yeah. um, and also, and next, the next service that we have in the evening, I'm going to talk about God's wrath on unrighteousness and how He does have a wrath on unrighteousness. But I just plead to anyone, because I don't really feel like anyone in here, but those that are online, to know that God has a wrath and, and it is um, the fact that He is a holy God. But that's why Jesus went to the cross. To save us from that. You know, to literally... It, it's, it's so simple as to say, Lord, I want to be saved. I want to be saved from myself most of all. And confessing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And so if there's anyone out there tonight that is searching for an answer in this life. You're, you're watching the news. You're watching things. You, you don't really know what's going on. I want to tell you right now that Jesus Christ wants for you to be part of His, of his life. He, he, he's calling you home. He's calling you home tonight. And just to believe in the life and the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is the only answer. You know, I was thinking today, we live in this world that is full of lies. The only truth that we have is the Word of God and uh, the Holy Spirit, which is the you know part of the Word and everything. Um, but too many people are just it's just like Noah's day. It's like Noah's day. He's Noah was a preacher of righteousness. You, I can't imagine him just you know repent, you know everything else like get right, you know, and uh, they didn't really have grace back then. I don't think. Um, well, I guess they did. It, it, was, it was credited back. It was credited because uh, foreknowledge and everything. But my point is is that he was preaching like, guys, come on. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. And I feel like right now in this world we're saying, come on, guys. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. Things are going to happen. Things are going to escalate. Whenever things hit the fan, it hits the fan. But too many people are asleep at the wheel. And I also want to say that there might be Christians out there right now. You might, you might even go to church every Sunday, but if you don't have a relationship with Him, guys, He wants for you to have a relationship with Him. It's not about going to church. It's not about just sitting in a pew and singing a song. Mm -hmm. It's about being born again. Being Amen. born again and set free forever. Being marked and sealed for an eternity. Because, guys, uh, things are getting real. They're getting real. But we know in this room that we have the king of this universe that is going to take care of us. And we have nothing to worry about. And I will tell you right now, don't worry, don't fear, don't fret, don't be anxious, don't be scared. And to know that he loves you. He loves you. And if someone loves us, I don't know if we know the depths of the love that we have that He has for us. But if He loves you that much that you feel inside of your heart, you know that He's going to protect us. But we also know that this world is evil and corrupt. And for those of us that stand, and I want to make this, I was, I'll probably say this on Sunday as well, but I just want to make a very strong statement to anyone out there and to us in here that uh, a while back, it's been a couple weeks ago, I reached out to Barry Matthews. And we talked for a while. And um, he told me, he said, Jake, this is your church. 
And so I'm going to make a statement right now that we are never going to close our church. Never. I'll give you my word on that. If I go to jail, whatever. But we don't know how things are going to happen in this world. We don't know the, the deep depths of everything. But we know there's another, there's another thing, right? We're never closing this church. People are going to end up coming in here because they can't come anywhere else. I'm going to tell you that right now. Right. We are Amen. to stand strong. Stand firm in your faith. They're going to try everything they can to scare us and to get us into a place back in a corner. They're going to try to get you back in a corner. And I'm going to tell you right now, man, I feel the Holy Spirit. We fight. Okay. We never, in the book of Acts, Acts uh, 5.29, the apostles are standing before basically a court setting. And they tell them, they said, we obey God rather than man. And that is what we are to do. Because I'm going to tell you, whenever, if, if there was ever a pandemic or anything going on in the world back then, they wouldn't have masks on. They wouldn't be getting a vaccine. They wouldn't be bowing down to people with agendas. That's right. They would say, no, I represent Jesus Christ and I do what He calls me to do. That's right. Amen. Unless He tells me otherwise, I'm not doing anything else. So I want to tell you guys right now that uh, we are standing strong in everything. Because we are the just and we live by faith. Faith is not by sight, and we live for Him. We represent the kingdom, and if we're representing, I'll put it like this. I'm not a coward. And I say that because you can have the toughest man in here, but if he is eat up with antichrist spirits inside of him, whenever he comes down to it, he's going to cower and bow down. But... I, as well as you guys in this room that have received Him, we have the power of the Holy Spirit inside of us. And we do not have a spirit of fear. We are to stand up and to speak out against the things that are coming upon us. Because uh, there's going to come a point, you know, it's funny because we think, well, we live in a little big lake, Texas town in West Texas, right? We, we don't really see a whole lot going on. But this journey... Is only going to escalate. And uh, we're going to stand unto death. Okay. I'll tell you that right now. That's right. And that sounds radical. It sounds extreme. But I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know if you read your Bible or not, but uh, <laughs> yeah. those things, um, those things are real. So either way, guys, we are to live by faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.